So climate has, has always changed. Um, it's, it's not something new, although what we're seeing now is very rapid climate change uh, caused by human activities. But one of the things um, we've, we've been doing increasingly is trying to understand how climate change is, has changed in the past to better understand how it might change in the future. And we've got temperature records going back about 100 years in terms of reliable temperature records around the world. But as we go further back in time, we want to understand how climate has changed. We have to use things called proxies, which are indicators of what the climate was in the past um, to reconstruct what was happening. So if we go further and further back, we, we have to use as many tools as possible. So one of the most famous is ice cores. They're a brilliant source of climate information uh, because they take us so far back in time. So if we think about Antarctica, this freezing area of the planet, it's been cold for a very long time. And when the snow falls in Antarctica, it sticks around and it <clears throat> slowly gets compressed into ice. And so if we drill through that ice, essentially we can use it like a time machine. So the deeper we go, the further back in time we can go. So we can go back nearly a million years, 800,000 years in the ice core record, and look through the ice at different um, levels, so different times in history, and see whether it was warmer or colder, how much greenhouse gas or how much carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere. So that's a great proxy to see how climate has changed in the past. Other proxies we can use are, are things like boreholes, so we drill into the, the surface of the earth and look at ripples in the temperature profile. So were there periods in the past when it was warmer? And we know there were periods where it was warm and periods when it was cold, so glacial and interglacial periods. And one of the, the great things we've seen by looking at past climate using these proxies is that climate has always changed and that we've had these swings in temperature over timescales of hundreds of thousands of years where basically we've had uh, periods where the sun is giving us more energy to the northern hemisphere and warming us up and so we've gone into an interglacial, a warm period and then as the earth wobbles in its orbit around the sun we switch back into a cool phase and we have glacial periods, much colder uh, periods of the Earth's history. So we've had these cycles of climate change, but what we're seeing now is way beyond what we've seen in the past in terms of the speed and the magnitude of, of the warming around the planet. So in the last hundred years about, climate has been gradually warming, not, not, not uninterruptedly and not continuously, but it has overall been warming fairly strongly and almost on every point at the Earth's surface where we have long enough measurements. Um, before then, in the last millennium, climate was um, variable over time, so there have been very cold periods. For example, the time around um, and following the eruption of Mount Tambura in 1815, the so-called year without a summer was exceptionally cold. Um, that was probably largely due to these um, both Tambura and the preceding volcano erupting, which, which um, shielded some of the incoming sunlight from the Earth's surface, so causing a, a global scale cooling. Um, there was the period generally, um, even before then, was a fairly cold period where we have these paintings of people skating on the ice and. Um, we have lots of evidence that it was, an ex that it was fairly cold from um, the 16th onwards to the, um, the early 19th century. And before then it was a bit warmer. As we know, the Vikings settled Greenland from 800 to about 1400, so there was a fairly long, they, they established a colony there for a fairly long time. Um, there is various evidence that um, the Middle Ages were not as cold as the period up from 1600 to 1800. Um, the, we are very confident that, this, that on average that period was warmer than the 16th to 18th century. Um, we know that from a number of sources. One is that um, people have tried to measure temperature um, for a long time. So there's very long records for the Central England record is going back to um, 1600 something or other. And, um, before then there is other documentary evidence, so monks have written diaries and um, people have recorded the time of the cherry blossom and things like that. So there's documentary evidence for climate being different um, from year to year and being different to today. And then um, you can um, take treating data, which is a, a science all by itself. Trees make thinner rings in years when they are struggling. 
So um, in lots of the globe, this is in dry years, but um, trees in high elevation and in high um, in high latitudes, where temperature is a big factor in how well they do, will respond strongly to um, cold and warm, anomalously cold or warm years. So you can take these tree rings and infer from their ring width and also from their density if this has been a good or a bad year for the tree. And if you do that in lots of places, you can reconstruct global temperatures decently.